The mighty Jordan River, that 250-kilometer-long stream that serves as a livelihood for millions of people, is threatening to dry up completely. The experts' forecasts are absolutely devastating, but what is the background to this worrying development? What happens if the worst comes to the worst and the Jordan River dries up? Is it even possible for us to avert this self-inflicted disaster? Stay tuned and find out together with us. The Dying River A quick look at the statement of Middle East correspondent Tim Abman is enough to understand how serious the situation really is. The Jordan River used to be a real river, but it doesn't deserve that name anymore. It really is a pitiful trickle. In places, you have to look for the water with a magnifying glass. But how did it come to this? Why did we not succeed in averting a scenario that was predicted almost 15 years ago? Because, in fact, as early as 2010, an official report appeared in which experts warned that the Jordan River would dry up completely. As is well known, this worst-case scenario would have devastating consequences both for humans and for nature. To find out why the Jordan River, in which, according to the Bible, Jesus Christ was once personally baptized, is losing more and more water, we should briefly look at the relevant statistics. While the Jordan's headwaters rise in the northern Golan Caves, the river forms the border between Israel and Jordan on its 250-kilometer journey to the Dead Sea. In the process, 1,200 million cubic meters of water should arrive at the Dead Sea each year. Reality, however, paints a somewhat different picture. In fact, only 200 million cubic meters of water reach the estuary. This is due to the massive water withdrawal by nations of Israel, Jordan, Syria, and other riparian states. Israel alone taps 500 million cubic meters of water from the Sea of Galilee every year. Where the cool water once poured out in great quantities, today only sad little brooks splash along in places. At the UN Climate Change Conference in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, Israel and Jordan promised to do better in the future, which is why both nations signed a Declaration of Intent. This includes, among other things, the construction of sewage treatment plants and the promotion of sustainable agriculture. However, it is doubtful that the river will one day be restored to its former glory. According to the experts' forecasts, however, the measures could be at least enough to regain half of the lost biodiversity. Wet Political Issue However, this was far from the first time that the Jordan River became the center of political interest. Because of its border location, the river has repeatedly been at the center of conflicts in the Middle East. While Israel sees the Jordan River and the Sea of Galilee as a fundamental pillar of its national water supply, the other riparian states also insist that they should not be left out, or left empty-handed, when it comes to water distribution. The heated dispute over water, which in the past repeatedly threatened to escalate into armed conflict, finally went down in history as the Jordan Water Question. However, this is a conflict that continues to smolder to this day. Because Israel fears that Jordan could drain the water from the Jordan River, the state still refuses to return the Golan Caves. That stretch of land, which as mentioned embodies the headwaters of the Jordan River, was conquered and occupied by Israel during the so-called Six-Day War of 1967. Elsewhere, however, the Jordan River has already helped to diffuse the tense situation between two competing nations. For example, under the Israeli-Jordanian Peace Treaty, Jordan was granted the official right to draw larger quantities of drinking water from the river in the future. Basically, Jordan is a land of contrasts. Here, the history of antiquity meets the innovations of modernity. No matter where we look in Jordan, there is practically always something that leaves us in pure amazement. So let's take a little bow to one of the most overwhelming testimonies of the past. Petra Imagine for a moment that you are squeezing through a canyon that is hundreds of meters long, 70 meters deep, and 2 meters narrow in places. Just when you wonder if this oppressive path will never end, you see it a colossal site with building facades carved directly into the rock. If this thought process sounds familiar to you, then you have probably already had the good fortune to marvel at the ancient ruins of Petra with your own eyes. Located east of the Arava Valley in Jordan, however, Petra is not only absolutely stunning, it is also extremely mysterious. By this we mean, first and foremost, the fact that this unique city was once created by the Nabataeans, who founded the first Arab empire in history. 
The problem is that the Nabataeans left hardly any written records for posterity, which is why their development has been handed down only in fragments and indirectly. The desert city, which is over 2,000 years old, is one of the so-called New Seven Wonders of the World and was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985. The building that is photographed by far the most is the legendary treasure house Kazin El Faran. With a height of almost 40 and a width of almost 25 meters, this structure looks like a rock-cut work of art. Contrary to the official designation, however, we are not dealing here with a treasure house in the classical sense. In truth, Kazin El Faran embodies one of the countless rock tombs. One theory says that it was built in the 1st century BC for the Nabataean king Aratus IV. Other theories say, however, that the complex was built only in the 2nd century AD. The fact that the urn on the top of the temple is adorned with several bullet holes is no coincidence. Some Bedouins saw a supposed treasure chest in the object, which is why they tried to break it open and get the non-existent treasures. Furthermore, the legendary rock city houses other royal tombs, a royal theater, and even a monastery that offers an unforgettable view of the surrounding canyons. In view of all the wondrous, detailed, and richly decorated structures, however, we must not forget one thing. According to estimates, only 20% of Petra has been excavated so far. So the former capital of the Nabataeans may still be hiding many exciting mysteries in the hot desert sands. The Dead Sea is Dying Let us hope that the Jordan River will not also one day turn into hot desert sand. As mentioned at the beginning, the river flows into the Dead Sea. This also means that the Salt Lake, which has no outlet, is inevitably affected by the negative development that the Jordan River has been undergoing for some time. While the Dead Sea is known in our consciousness primarily for its extremely high salt content and therapeutic purposes, scientists have viewed the body of water from a somewhat different angle. Compared to the 1930s, the amount of water that now arrives in the Dead Sea each year has shrunk by 100 million cubic meters. Thus, because the Dead Sea receives less water than it evaporates, its level has been dropping rapidly for several decades. Between 1970 and 2000 alone, the surface of the Salt Lake shrank by 33%. Well, now one could think that the decline of the Dead Sea is probably connected with some slumps in the tourism industry. But worse consequences have to be expected. Well, who thinks so is subject to a devastating fallacy. The traces of the drying up are by no means limited only to the decrease of the bath tourism and the livelihoods connected to it. For this unwelcome development has already resulted in a drastic transformation of the landscape. To explain, as soon as the water of the Dead Sea evaporates, it leaves behind a series of large craters. As a result, so-called salt caverns form underground, posing a great danger. When the fresh water flows into those caves, it dissolves the salt layer and causes the structures to collapse. The huge depressions formed in this way are called sinkholes. Already six years ago, experts counted 6,000 of these gaping chasms, and that, mind you, on the Israeli side alone. Furthermore, the recession of the Salt Lake is also inevitably accompanied by a loss of pressure underground, a process that causes groundwater to drain from the surrounding regions toward the Dead Sea, which only exacerbates the water crisis. The consequences of climate change and soaring population growth are also unlikely to really help the water shortage. breaking out of the vicious circle. But what is left for the region's residents now? Is building more sewage treatment plants and focusing on sustainable agriculture really enough to save the Jordan River and the Dead Sea? Fortunately, there are two other measures that could be taken to do this. On the one hand, water withdrawal from the river could be significantly reduced. The alternative approach is based on building a pipeline to transport water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. Problem solved? Well, not quite, because in fact, the second approach is also accompanied by great worries and fears. For example, what was actually intended to save the Dead Sea could ultimately deal it the final death blow. In this regard, experts point to the different chemical compositions of the two bodies of water. It is simply not possible to foresee the consequences the mixing of the two waters would have on the already battered ecosystem. 
Against this background, the idea of diverting more water into the Jordan River seems much more promising. In fact, Israel already has a number of advanced desalination plants in the Mediterranean that produce more fresh water than is currently needed. So, if the surplus water were now pumped into the Sea of Galilee, it could be transferred from there to the Jordan River and thus to the Dead Sea. With the emphasis on could. At present, in fact, it looks more likely that the Red Sea Dead Sea project will be put into action. Whether this step will result in the salvation or the demise of the Dead Sea remains to be seen. And with that, thanks for watching. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons to support us for free and stay up to date at the same time. Before you take a look at the other videos in the credits, we'd like to ask your opinion. What do you think about the worrying developments that the Jordan River and the Dead Sea are going through? Is it even possible to save the waters?